Hi guys, welcome back to Neo2. Today we're talking about weapon choices and the synergy buried in stat scaling. You probably already know this, but every weapon has certain character stats that it scales with organically. I've been trying to make a decision about which weapons to pick. I'm kind of a numbers guy, so I did some digging and some reading to help inform my choice. Bear in mind I haven't watched any guys on this yet. I will eventually be getting more involved with the community, but for this choice at least, I wanted to come to my own conclusions without having the meta forced on me. I've pulled some information together from various sources and I've made a chart. Okay, so yeah, I'm a geek, but no, <laughs> I'm not sorry for that. The chart shows how each weapon is ranked against each of the character stats. So that's heart, strength, skill, constitution, stamina, courage, dexterity, and magic. When you put a point into a stat on your character, it automatically helps your weapon damage if the weapon is aligned with the stat in question. I got most of the information from the wiki. All the rankings shown here are for baseline weapons. I expect the weapons you find later in the game will have slightly altered scaling ranks, but for the time being, this will serve as a good baseline measure. I also added in a column for range. This one's purely anecdotal. It isn't scientific. It's based on my own experience during the beta from my weapon showcase videos. So take that column with a pinch of salt. So here's the criteria that I'm following when I'm looking at weapons and making choices for a good pairing. First and foremost, it has to be fun. I need to enjoy the play style and the aesthetic of the weapons. That said, for it to feel fun for me, it also needs to be effective. It sure as hell isn't fun getting battered over and over again unnecessarily because I made a poor choice at the beginning of the game. Secondly, range variation. For me, I like to have all the angles covered as much as possible. I know it isn't possible to cover every single scenario, but I like to give myself options when it comes to dealing with different enemies. Third, attack speed versus damage. Again, I like to attempt to either A, find the middle ground, or B, have a way to cover a variation of heavy hitting versus speed attack to give myself options as the game presents different challenges. Fourth, individual weapon versatility. Ideally, I want each weapon to stand on its own without needing a crutch to fall back on. 5. Utility Okay, do the weapons I'm looking at have any little bonuses to help with crowd control, enemy aggro distance or manoeuvrability? That's important to me. And of course, weapon synergy. From a stats perspective, how well do the weapons pair when it comes to how they scale with my stats? Am I getting the most bang for my buck when I invest a point in my character? I don't want to spread myself too thin when I'm trying to max out the damage potential of my weapons. Which brings us all the way back to the chart I made. So, I started by taking the stat synergy into account and then I went from there. The remainder of the things on my list I could take from having tried the weapons out and the movesets during those showcase videos. So on the chart, I added filters so that I could see, for example, all weapons that scale with strength at a glance or all the weapons that benefit from courage. The chart looks simple, but I found myself looking over it for so long and cross-referencing, so I tried to make it easy for myself. I've tried not to let my natural bias towards certain weapons simply override the facts. You get the idea anyway, so back to the sheet. For convenience, I added a section which shows the other main benefits you get for each stat too. It doesn't cover every single minor benefit, but it shows the main ones, which will at least give you a steer in the right direction. I'll leave a link to the spreadsheet in the description. It'll be view only, but you're very welcome to copy it out and put it in your own document if you like and have a play around with it. Again, this is just my own thought process. If anyone has a different approach, I'd love to hear it. Leave me a comment and we can debate it. Please bear in mind, I'm learning as I go and I'm bringing you my findings as I find them. So keep any comments constructive if you don't mind. I'd like to eventually build a community of like-minded weapon specialists and geeks so that we can pool our resources. Also, selfishly, following this process has been a great way to help me clarify my own thinking. If you ever watch my Let's Play series or if I end up streaming live at some point in the future, you'll notice I tend to think out loud. So now I'll quickly talk you through my weapon shortlist and the rationale I follow behind it. I'm torn between my final two choices, but I'll explain that toward the end. So looking at the chart only, the most obvious pairing would be a single sword and dual sword. They each benefit from three stats simultaneously. 
stats put into heart, strength and skill. The problem with this, well to me at least, it feels like it wouldn't be a very well rounded build. It would scale brilliantly for both weapons at once for every stat point placed but well it doesn't meet my criteria for versatility, range variance or damage versus speed crossover. So that one's out for me. Next, Switchblade and Spear. Each weapon benefits from stats placed in both skill and constitution. Constitution stats also give me extra life and resist for poison and paralysis. The weapon pairing offers me great range, speed and damage variation. Points put into skill also benefit both bows and rifles, so on paper it sounds amazing, doesn't it? So what's the catch? I'm glad you asked. To put it bluntly, the, uh, the spear is shit. Okay, yeah, I know, that's a bold statement, but just for me, it felt clunky, it felt disjointed, I just didn't enjoy the playstyle. So, despite the numbers and the synergy, the pairing's out for me too. Plus, the Switchglaive main scaling is, is magic. Uh, it's an outlier, that one. I don't personally want to use magic as a crutch. I like the thought of relying on weapon skill. I do accept, however, that I may need to change my stance on that one, depending on what the game throws at me. The next pairing I consider is the Adachi in either single or dual swords. From a synergy perspective, they all have scaling with heart and strength stats. It would cover the range, speed and damage variation criteria I'm looking for easily. As a side benefit from the heart and strength stats, my maximum key would be growing. I'd also get a small bonus for maximum weight allowance. It would lend itself to a heavy armor build eventually. Downside? Well, I'd want to pick the Jewel Sword personally to go with the Adachi, but the pairing isn't perfect. Only one of the stats matches up, and the scaling for the Jewel Sword in strength is a D, so it's far from optimal. So that one's out too. Which brings me to my final two choices. I've picked the winner for now, but I'm giving myself permission to change my mind after a few hours gameplay if I decide I've picked wrong. I may even change my mind at the last minute, but here's where I'm at for now. So, my first choice, plan A. This is what I'm planning on starting the game with. Axe and hatchets. Aesthetically, I love both weapons. I enjoy the playstyle of each. The damage, range, speed and playstyle versatility boxes are all ticked for me. Quick side note, if you enjoy reading, look up the book Legend by David Gemmell. If you've never read it, you've missed out. You're looking for a character called Druss. He's who I'd want to emulate with this build. And I'll probably end up trying to make my character look like him if I can. If you end up reading the book for the first time based on this recommendation, you're welcome. You'll thank me later. Okay, so back to the weapons. The axe is a powerhouse. It's got great range. The spin, I think, would be useful for crowd control if I get surrounded. The hatches are quick with decent damage and a great moveset. They can also be thrown, which appeals to me as a backup long-range option. synergy wise they both scale well with Courage and to a lesser degree with stamina. The side benefits are that with those two stats, I get increased life and increased stamina, well, key, recovery. The hatchets also have a B plus scaling with skill. So if I decide to, then I can boost my bow and rifle damage at the same time. The ax also scales with strength, which means that if I decide to push for the heavy armor, passive bonuses in the future, I'll have the option and I'll also be boosting my ax damage at the same time. To me, that feels like a pretty well-rounded build. So that was plan A. Plan B, well, confession time, this was mainly born from my craving to use the dual swords. The primary stat for dual swords is skill. So the best synergy on the primary stat would be to pair it with hatchets on paper, but that doesn't tick my box for range variation and damage. The next best primary stat pairing would be dual swords with the Kursori Gamma. Based on their scaling with skill, the skill stat focus also naturally gives me access to light armor passive bonuses eventually as well. Now this pairing is a strange one, it's on the verge of breaking my own rules. On one hand, the damage output and speed of the attacks is very similar between the two weapons. In the same ballpark at least. But, the Kusori Gamma has an option for the heavy charge attack, which gives a way to close the distance in a fight, either by dragging the enemy in, or pulling yourself towards them. That's an example of the utility I'm looking for also. Alongside the skill stat, both the dual swords and the Kusurigama also scale with strength, 
so that lines up okay. Additionally, if I were to put some focus on heart for the dual sword scaling, I also raise my maximum stamina, key energy, and fire resist. And if I put some focus on dexterity for the Kusurigama, then it gives me bonuses to ninjutsu, which then lets me play with the buff system. So, despite all the analysis, I'm still a little torn. There are my two choices, either axe and hatchets with a heavy armor focus, or the dual swords and the Kusurigama with a light armor focus. Hey guys, I hope you found this useful. Let me know your thoughts or questions in the comment section and don't forget to hit the like button on your way past. Um, quick reminder before you go, the link to the spreadsheet is in the description if you want it. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Really appreciate your time. Uh, love you to subscribe if you feel like joining me again. Hit like, do a comment, hit the bell, you know, all those things. And I'll, uh, I'll see you for the next one. Thanks again for joining me. Take care now. Bye-bye.